All right. Hello, everyone. I'm going to focus mostly in the first part, at least here, to on taking notes on, on status updates from the team. Uh, and then we're going to go into this discussion with, with Celestia team and uh, Mark or Julian from the SDK team, or both of them. And there's two other topics that uh, we gathered throughout the last two weeks on, uh, on ABCI++. This was from Telegram. Uh, I don't know if the user is here, but it might still be nice to, to cover this. And uh, then uh, on the same block execution question uh, that overlaps potentially with say with uh, what we were discussing last week about optimistic processing feature, but actually it's probably not the same. Uh, so we'll go into this one first. Uh, Tane or Sergey, you wanna give the update? Yeah, I have to give an update over here. So we, for those who haven't seen yet, we cut our first 034. Uh, Tinkercore Core 034 compatible release uh, a couple of days back. So that's ready and available to use. We have some instructions on the, our documentation site as to how to switch your dependency. It should be a, a drop-in replacement. So you should be able to just do a, a go mod edit replace and replace your Tinkercore Core dependency with uh, Comet BFT. And that uh, seems to work, by the way. Awesome. Glad to hear that. <laughs> That's good yeah, we, we just to add, to add to what Sen was saying. So, not only that, that but we are uh, we are supposed to be supporting uncoordinated upgrades. So you, we have tested as part of our QA, which is something we didn't do in the past because we didn't do. So as part of our QA, we have tested mixed networks of Tenement Core and Comet Buffed. So the the last version of Tenement Core, not any, anything else. So you want to be really sure. Uh, the advice is to first upgrade to the latest. Then I mean core, which is 26, and then up upgrade to the, this is basically what has been in test, being tested in our QA. I don't see any reason for any other combination not to, not to work, but that's not what we tested. Cool. Well, yeah, Marco says that they're still testing. State sync is causing some issues at the moment, but uh, so we'll look into that. Maybe if we have time on the call that oh, can okay. talk about the specifics of state sync issues, because state sync has a wide range of issues as far as we know. Uh, already, so we don't know if it's, it's pre-existing or if it's new issues. So let's have a chat about that. But we we made it uh, a concerted effort to not make any breaking changes whatsoever at the protocol level. All API is exactly the same. RPC is exactly the same. The protos are exactly the same. P2P is exactly the same. The main thing that we we did is rename the overall software. We even kept the Go module URL the same, so you can do a, a simple replace um, in your Go mod to be able to switch to Comet BFT. So um, then, yep. sorry, just thirty seven and thirty. Yes. So then thirty seven, uh, we've cut release candidates for O thirty seven zero, and we're hoping to cut our first official O thirty seven zero release on Monday next week. So watch out for that. And then as for O38, um, the full so, so remember O37 has ABCI 1.0, so that's the first part of ABCI plus plus with prepare and process proposal. And we're hoping to cut at least an alpha release of O38 this quarter still, so within the next month, so then people can start integrating with uh, and start experimenting with. Uh, our full ABCI++ release. We will only be able to have a fully QA release of this though sometime next quarter. So within the next two, two to three months or so. To get a bit more visibility on, on you know, the detail where we are at in O38. Well, first of all, there's an ongoing discussion of switching to Semver. So chances are that O38 will become 1.0 1, 1 because that's actually the earliest time that we can do that. Uh, say without major disruption for us. And uh, I know that the community really wants us to move, to move as soon as possible. So that's something that is being discussed. Uh, more on like on, on execution. So, you know, I don't have a link here, but if you go to Comet BFT, Comet BFT to the project, you can see the our priorities there. And uh, basically what we're up to now is we are finalizing the, the, the code is basically complete, has been complete since be, be, before the renaming. You guys know that we had to, uh, you know, to. Uh, how to say this, like anticipate, uh, uh, embark in this renaming activity that has taken us more than a month because of the, you know, happening that would happen like uh, late last last year in, in the sense that we, we found out without a repo to work on. So basically that, that was kind of, that became like a super priority, even more priority than, than ABCI. And so 
the, even before that renaming was done, the code was already there. It's in a feature branch at the moment. And uh, we are just at the last stages of making sure we didn't forget any we didn't forget any code or any logic that we had in 036, which is where this was initially implemented. Uh, should take um, long long time. Should be, take a few days. On on the same front, we are um, working on the spec. So basically, backporting the spec in 036 to um, you know to the to, to main at, at the moment, uh, which basically talks about VOR extensions and finalized block, which is not present in 037. And uh, and the last thread on, of this work is doc documentation. Now, as soon as the code is in and the spec is in, we could be in, a, in, in, in the position of releasing that alpha, even if the documentation is not up to date in the sense that people that really know what they're doing, they can actually start integrating. And this, as uh, Thane said, will happen in a few weeks. We, at this point, we are 2nd of March. It's not like, we don't want to overpromise, so it's not sure that, we even, you know, that we're gonna have a final release uh, by the end of this quarter in particular, because, you know, there are other, you know, parts of the stack that need to integrate with it. And we have a protocol with them about alpha, QA and RC, and then finally the release. And so, but at least you, you know, this this makes probably hopefully more, pre more predictable for when you actually can at least start integrating with, with that. We will keep you up to date whenever any of the events relevant for integration happen. Super thorough, Sergio, nice. Any questions? All right, the grand act. Is it? Uh, go ahead. Is it helpful to join a production network with the and comment and kind of like report back to you guys? So in in our current um, quality assurance process, we haven't considered that because we basically we had to go from empty set to something kind of like inspires confidence to the, to the community. And you know, you, you cannot do that. Like we had to do that on our own in order to advance fast. What you are saying is a very good idea. It hasn't been implemented yet. The te technically, if this application is using the SDK, we need the SDK on our side in the sense that you cannot just, uh, in principle, the, for, for these branches, you know, they are breaking, the, the ABC is totally breaking. I think it's not a surprise. Uh, I mean, I'm not surprising anyone, anyone here. So you cannot just basically dropping a different version of, uh, of Comet with like a, you know, a non-aligned version of SDK. So would you, the idea you are, you are proposing is, is um, an excellent one. Uh, and we're, uh, probably we need to, to progress on that as we, as we go. All right, I mean, well, like what I could do is make builds of say like Osmo, Juno and the hub and just try it. Uh, and is, would it be all right if I got back to you guys two weeks later? I'll probably yeah, have okay. results actually sooner than that. That would be amazing. Which which version are you talking about of Comet? The thirty four version of Comet, yeah. which that makes you sense. know, to my knowledge, uh, drops in very smoothly. By the way, and complements that. Then. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we're already running it. Not, running it on not change much right. there. Yeah, sorry, Jaco. I mis I, I misunderstood you. I thought you were you were talking about like changing from, for instance, to, uh, to thirty four to thirty seven, or from thirty seven to the next one. And that's not that's what I was explaining is not possible. But if you stay in 34, basically everything I said is totally invalid. <laughs> but by the way, oh okay, right, <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Um, the, I'm working with 37 as well, but I, I'm not aware of any network that is like in production on that at all. Marco, yeah, we're uh, we're running on Juno and Mars already with uh, with Comet BFT. Testnet or or mainnet? mainnet. Testnet, like mainnet. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Okay. Shall I shall I shall I go to it early today? Just think. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. Th th uh, this is uh, my earlier comment of um, state sync causing issues. So uh, we've been testing on Juno. Well, Julian's been testing on Juno and Mars, um, and we're just running into like the double close issue of state sync between 118 and 119 and um, we're just de like covering a bit of the edge cases so we know how to best communicate it to users uh, so this could be due to the go compiler update right so like if yeah. people compile if people build their binaries this is one thing that's come up recently if you build your binary with go 118 you've got to make sure that the rest of the network is also building their binaries with the same version of go Remember, Go yeah. one one eighteen has already reached end of life, so 
Um, as far as we can tell, it actually require a coordinated upgrade to move to 119. Um, so, so you could, um, yeah, you could just say like, hey, state sync is going to be broken until the whole network updates to the next version. Um, since it's like for us, it's only a state sync issue. Um, I think Cosmosm, every chain running Cosmosms are on 119 anyways, so it's not going to like not going to cause them issues. I think it may like th this is just what we're testing um, right now. Um, because it's like on 046, we push the fix for it, but we may not actually need the fix. So we're reverting it and testing it um, because the fix is gonna land in 047. Um, and so we're just testing that out right now. It's like quote unquote fix. It's not really a bug. It's just like the Go compiler did, did a change where like it broke something between 118 and 119 for us. Or I must say, I, I know this is a community call has nothing to do with Go or with Google, but I must say that I'm super surprised that they are they keep such such strict policy on on end of life, you know, uh, because this is not a library, this is a programming language with a compiler, etc. So only keeping up the last two versions when they actually changed, like in in only twelve, I mean around one year, I don't find. It, but of course, this is out of the scope of this meeting. Yeah, should we go in the upgrades discussion? Sure. All right, I'm gonna to try to keep up with uh, with taking notes. Uh, maybe we start with what are we trying to achieve? Like what would be an ideal workflow or what would be a way to specify the problem? I think like- yes, I can try added, to... Oh yeah, Mustafa, please go. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm the one who kind of initiated this discussion. So I can try to add some context here. So for some context, um, we feel like the like the co the current Cosmos and Tenement stack does not have a good upgrade mechani mechanism. Because right now, if there's a new version of Tenement or Cosmos that is backwards incompatible with previous versions or has a like mm -hmm. consensus breaking change, the current expected way to upgrade that is to basically uh, swap out the binary using something like Cosmovisor. And then, what, and then, and then you, and then typically you remove the old, you, the, the old code is, is just flat out removed. The problem with that is that that means if you want to sync your chain from the Genesis block, then you would basically have to run multiple binaries. Um, and that's something that Cosmovisor does, for example. But the problem with that, with having to run multiple binaries, is that it's not really long term sustainable. Because that means in the long term, you have to maintain multiple binaries. For example, like you have to make sure that a peer-to-peer -peer network is compatible across all binaries. And then secondly, you have to make sure that um, any security patches have to be backported to previous binaries. Like let's say there was a bug in the P2P layer or state sync that allows you to remote execute remote code on someone's machine, then you have to backport that security bug across all binaries, all the old binaries. So you have to basically maintain all the old binaries. Um, so if you like, so if you look at how a Bitcoin or Ethereum does upgrades, they don't use multiple, they don't require people to run multiple binaries to sync from Genesis. What they instead have is like, they have like if statements in the code that, uh, that are triggered when um, an upgrade height is reached. And then when I say an upgrade, upgrade right, uh, height is reached, then different code paths are executed. Like let's say, for example, you want to introduce a new opcode in Bitcoin or like Ethereum, for example, uh, and like a new pre compile smart contract, you just have an if statement to say that if block height is greater than this, then enable this new uh, pre compile. Mm -hmm. So like <laughs> it would be ideal to have something similar in Cosmos or Tendermint. Um, but I guess the main challenge there is that it's not entirely clear how to do that. In considering that Tenement and Cosmos are, are meant to be used, uh, 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 like the, the code base is kind of like, well, yeah, they're kind of like meant to be uh, imported by a blockchain by a blockchains. So it's like how it's not really clear to me. I mean, I guess it could work, but yeah, I, I, I guess there's just kind of like an open discussion around that, because like Tenement and Cosmos isn't like one chain. It's like it's like 
anyone can use it to create a chain. So it's like, would you, if you want to add multiple code paths to Tenement and Cosmos to have these, to, in, to, to have upgrades, then like every future chain would also have to run that, run that code, even if they don't need it. Right. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so I think the, the upgrades is very important. And I think in a previous discussion, Mustafa has pointed out that the most important thing is to have single binary syncs, which are different in my opinion from just having an upgrade. A single binary sync I think is a lot more doable and it just means that some for some upgrades, you'll have to upgrade by you'll everyone will have to still have this coordination effort where you shut down and then you restart using a different binary. But that new binary can still sync from scratch. And I think that 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 is actually like significantly more doable. Um, like using Tendermint, we only have to we only have to consider like block sync or state sync and using the SDK then in from that point of the SDK, the SDK really only has to handle like um, adding height, con like the context of height to routing transactions. And then the, the rest can be handled, I think, by the application, at least in for only for like single binary syncs. And then there's, there's also like all the proprietary things for your chain. So like for Celestia, we have like a lot of block encoding. So if the block encoding changes, then we have to also address those changes. But, but I think like a lot of those things can be handled by the application in however those developers want to handle that thing. The, the only things that, as long as we only address single binary syncs and we don't require every single upgrade to be this, um, you can upgrade ahead of time and you don't have to restart at the upgrade height. But with, your, with the single binary syncs that you're proposing, would that require multiple versions of the code base? Like with the kind of Replicated copies of the code base, or or like big chunks of the code base, for example. Um, so, no, so, no, it's it, it's just ahead. for the the single binary syncs is like what you're describing with if statements. I see. Okay. Yeah. It's just so, that the the upgrade path is just uh like less comp like there's just less things that uh it's very difficult to have a single binary that can upgrade there's like specific things that like if you wanted to change something in consensus or you wanted to change something very dramatic then you for some for like a lot of upgrades i think you can have a single binary but for some upgrades you can't but if you just focus on the single binary syncs and these if statements then i think you can go like really far yeah de definitely agree here um so within the sdk this is going to be become a lot easier because we're gonna uh, like we are going with the path of like versioning sub protocols. So it's like you're versioning the modules instead of um, versioning the SDK as a whole. And so like right now, let's say like um, if you're using, like if you upgrade staking V1 to staking V2, you put the upgrade height, you put the if statement and you just say like at this, everything below be before this height, you can send to this module for execution. And then um, at everything past this height, you send to this other, uh, Thing, other um, module for execution. Of course, here it's like the the location on in state is the same, and so there's a, like a, a minor gotcha for like at that upgrade height, but um, it's doable. And I think like this is generally the path we're trying to like move towards, um, and this is like what really like oh, spinning up modules into their own Go mods mm -hmm. is aiming to accomplish. Just because like versioning V1 of the Cosmos SDK um, is like cool and everything it's a good goal but like the sdk as a whole shouldn't really like what is a sdk v1 when you ask when we ask ourselves that it's more we want to define it as like a set of interfaces that modules implement and you just really have to implement those interfaces and like the goal is that no modules depend on the cosmos sdk on like the, the types folder or something like that everything is housed within the module um and uh, the same thing with Comet. So it's like no module should actually be able to depend, should need to depend on Comet as well um, in order to um, do some stuff like this. Sergio? Yeah, I think I think that makes sense. But uh, one thing I want, I'll, I want to add is um, there's also a question here about like um, how big of a code block do you want to do you want a version? So like, for example, like let's say you have a peer-to-peer -peer or a state sync module but you only want to change one line of code that 
is that is that is backwards compatible, then you might not necessarily want to create like an entire new version of that module just to change like what that one line of code because then that introduces the same problems as before where you have to like maintain multiple module maintain multiple like copies of a of a of a module from a security perspective or backwards compatibility perspective. Uh, so I think there's like questions like um, at, at what at what level of granularity do we want to have these if statements? Because uh, I think having if statements for different modules is helpful uh, it, when like big chunks of the module change, but we also might want to have like if statements within the modules as well, if that makes sense. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. Um, and yeah, to, to, like this exact discussion is like what we're discussing in our working group um, because uh, the, the main cover point of the working group is like how to differentiate state machine versioning with like, let's say put above versioning and like client versioning and stuff like this. Like, yeah, like you said, like if you add a field, it's technically consensus breaking, but like, like by definition, it's like there, there are ways to do it, but it's like, we're trying to define a, a cleaner way of doing this. Like happy to add you guys to those calls. Um, just because like, this is like, um, we're actually we've been discussing this for like a couple of weeks now on like how to move forward um and be like future proof in that sense cool sergio i think you're on mute sorry thanks Eddie. so to me what i've heard so far is a little bit surprising but uh, on the good side and i'll explain why um so when we were actually about to deliver ABC++ was called at the time last year, uh, which in the end we didn't manage to. The next big thing in our plate was actually soft upgrades. Um, and so uh, we did some sort of investigation. I know that you guys some sort of briefly talked about it this, this in some slacks this, this week. And the kind of the surprise that, I, that I, I'm seeing here uh, from, from you, the users, is the following, is that apparently the, the important thing for you is the like removing the custom the consumer visor component right which means that you would like to have only one bi binary and that's it however the focus of last year's investigation and what we thought that the community wanted first it's a, a um you know a next level is this 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 case that you guys were discussing is quite quite benign the the the, the problem the problematic case is if you have a break a break a breakage in the blocks, in, you know, in like the way some hashes are are, are, are computed, exclu excluding the app hash, huh? but on, on, on any of the hashes that are computed in the block, etc., you know, changing the binary or using Cosmovisor is not even going to help you. You actually have to have to hard fork. That is the reason we are in, in the hub. We are in Cosmos Hub Four because there were some changes in the past that uh, not, you know, by changing by swapping binary was not even enough. You know, there was a, a, such an incompatibility in the block structure that you needed to actually, you know, dump the state into some sort of something that would become a new Genesis file. And then basically you start from scratch, you lose all the history, etc. And by the way, one thing is like the last thing this was done for Cosmos, Cosmos at four, IBC was not online. Now it would be even worse because IBC is online, which means that if you actually have to hard fork a chain, all the IBC connections from that chain uh, to other chains is not going to be working for a while until you you have built up some some history. So to me, that is kind of good news in in the sense that it gives us an idea that probably when we prioritize the prioritize this problem to be solved, probably what the community wants is first dealing with this binary problem, be adding via adding ifs as I heard that's fine that's acceptable. Probably we need to come up with a set of rules when, whenever we make make a change in order to respect those ifs so that you know this the whole thing works, and like excluding for later on like for next year or I don't know when, the 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 extra functionality you need to deal with this catastrophic case where basically let's say you need to change the way all the hashes work in the in the in the in the blocking blockchain header. Uh, now my question to you back to you now is. Am I right? I mean, am I imp interpreting this right? Or are you also interested in these other more like less benign ch chains where today you need to, you need to uh, for hard fork? So, so actually with the reason why the Cosmos Sub did Cosmos Sub 1, 2, and 3 is actually not what you described. Um, it's actually for like immaturity of the software. So, um, but like, like block breaking is like, you can do it 
with like an if statement like, I, like you don't need to do like an export genesis import like the export genesis was not actually because of tendermint block protocol breakage it was there because like we did not have an upgrade module in the cosmos sdk and so to migrate state to new to a new schema we had to export the state run a script that migrated the state to the new format and then not, import it i'm not sure i agree with that marco because if you change the block structure in in an arbitrary way then you would be breaking like clients and you would be breaking you know clients that are implementing not chains and so basically ibc would stop working until everybody kind of upgrades or everybody takes the you know the the solution of adding the same ifs at each of the chains in, in each of the versions of the sdk and and commit that all these chains that are connected the ibc would be working out would be broken for you know a little while let's say yeah, I mean, yeah like there's no way around that right i mean that's that's fine like light lines need to know if like is that breaking change in the header there's no way around that it's not only ibc um but like all light lines well, well ibc well, is like probably the most important use case there maybe there's no solution as you say but basically yes last last year when we were actually starting to work on this we were actually looking for a solution like that looking for a solution where for instance if you change hashes or something like this you kind of protect the overall algorithm so that nobody you know so that everybody is able able to you know be working you know like mixed like for instance ibc and black clients could actually still be working even if such a change has like make rendering those those changes invisible in terms of the interface and the question was actually whether it was not whether it was possible or not, but whether it was possible without even hard forking for the last time. This, but now, like maybe, maybe I'm hearing you, so maybe, maybe we're actually too optimistic, and it's not even possible. That that could be actually the outcome. We never we never got we never got the time to to get to the bot bottom of this, so so I cannot tell you at this point. But I see that uh, like apparently the the I mean I, I would like to reiterate my question, which is, you know, if we if we if if we come up with something in the next months some solution some design some architecture that allows you to basically via if or something like this not having to swap binaries but still you still have the risk of hard forking if you have a dramatic change in the block structure is that good enough for the community or 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 you think we have to solve everything at once if we have the chance no i think that for me that like like ibc is working on channel upgradability like I don't think like Comet or the consensus engine is meant to solve all these issues. Like there's it's like like breakage needs to be accepted. There's no physical way you can like streamline this. So basically, think, I'm trying, I'm trying to understand. Better, so basically what you're saying management. is that so basically what you're saying is that we should not try to solve this problem because apparently it's impossible to solve. Is that what you mean? I mean, I think Marco Marco is advocating that like you don't need to solve it on the IDC level, right? Um, if you, if you had a solution where to, level. Uh, yeah, I, my, 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 what what I was meaning is solving it as a, at the light client level. So having uh, a light client version that is transparent to all this, so that it doesn't have to be dealt with, be dealt with you know beyond the light client. I mean, I like chains have broken light clients in the past. And they've like, there's like some sort of upgrade. There's like, yeah, other chains do like channel upgradability for like IPC, like um, Polkadot like updated their light client like once or like once or twice already um, from Genesis. So, and they changed their header format, I think one a few times. So I think like, um, oh, sorry, not, not I, so I said Polkadot and Substrate. Um, <laughs> uh, so uh po poke that and such but not xo I, I don't know anything about xo but um, it sounds to me like if um the ibc client has a backwards incompatible change you will uh yeah you would need the if statements in the in in the ibc light client code to make that change at a certain height but i'm not, I'm yeah. not an expert in ibc client so i'm, 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 I'm well, not sure if there's ever been a, a backwards incompatible change in um, the, the, the current ibc clients so i'm not sure how, how, that, how that would be done there has the been not, from my understanding, but um, the if statements for the light client verification, like, like you wouldn't really need, like, to update light client verification of an older version because it's like the transactions are being executed against that version. If that makes sense. So the example, the breaking example I was thinking of is like 
somehow the light client sometimes exposes things about the block's header. And so, you know, like the header is what it is. And if it changed, so, you know, light client uses it for, to verify, but also I know that for instance, IPC is using our R RPC um, interface to actually query about blocks. And, and, and so if the format changes, then uh, these changes are exposed. Today they are exposed. How how is that? How are um, IBC? How are breaking IBC clients upgrades done right now? H has there ever been one? Uh, from my understanding, uh, it's like they're working I don't on think so. up upgradability right now. Okay, so actually, like um, the the fee middleware. So uh, fee middleware is like a good example. Like they released a new feature that was technically breaking, and every existing channel um, cannot use it because they need to upgrade or reestablish a new channel. By reestablishing a new channel. The tokens that were transferred over that channel technically become uh, need to be transferred back and then transfer over the new channel. And so the proposal here is to do like channel upgradability. So you upgrade the channel to to utilize this new feature of like fee middleware. So that is like I think that's like the okay. going to be like the first time something like that is done. I see. Yeah, I can, I can give you an example I know very well, which is uh, and we're not maybe we're going to talk later about this. Is ABC, so ABC two zero, you know, there are a board extension. So an early an early design was actually assuming that the board extensions would be kept in the blockchain. So in the actual block structure, so the block structure would have to change. So the the commit structure would have to change, and therefore the the hash that is like basically the the way it is verified would be broken from that point on. And so if you don't have a mechanism basically to to hide that away from you know from uh, whoever is using it, like IBC for instance, the light client or, or IBC directly when they are querying then you know they, they they really need to be aware that now these things in order to verify you know the the validators when you're actually advancing in the blockchain trying to make sure that you're not being fooled by a, like a fake block um so those things now have changed and it's actually they, they this is the, is the is a blockchain you know it's a blockchain structure it's visible so um you know, you know like uh, what we were after last year was actually a, a way to kind of hide that somehow so that people don't have to deal with those differences as far as, far as possible of course i mean we, we know that there are no miracles, but that was what, what we're trying to do. So is it fair to say that these are two different problems? It sounds like Mustafa, what you were describing in the beginning is you want a binary that you can use to state sync across yeah. even hard forks. And then what Sergio is talking about is design the protocol so you don't even need those if statements. So you, you kind of make it future proof and um, there may be something yeah. more for the future. Yeah, yeah. As I said, like the the actual end goal is to not have to use multiple binaries or maintain multiple code bases. Whether you use if statements or simply backwards incompatible future upgrades, that's fine either way. But I I I, I think like on, on a tenement the cosmos level, at least some things will require if statements. Like if you just simply change the state how the way the state hash is is, is or the app hash is calculated. Like that would just require, like if you change the, like if you swap out IAVL to something else, for example, that would require if statement. And I think like the, the one of the, the, the um, is more challenging to do for Cosmos and Tendermint, given that they're supposed to be reusable frameworks. Uh, because like, first of all, you can't just say like, you can't, for the if statement, you have to actually choose an upgrade height, but different users of the Cosmos SDK and Tendermint with have with upgrade at different times, so they need to be able to define their own upgrade heights. And secondly, the other um, kind of trade off here, or the, the other problem here, is that you might have like um, you, you over time you're gonna build up the code base with a lot of if statements. But that's how like get like get for example has all of these hard forks and they have like different if statements all of these hard forks. So it kind of like adds. It's going to constantly add code to the code base, and that's like one of the disadvantages. Even though, like, even if new chains don't need that code, yeah. Roughly speaking, yeah. this is what you mean. I actually, yeah. I actually like that. Just to summarize, I actually like the idea of you know that apparently we were being too ambitious uh, in the last, in past months, and apparently what the community wants is actually something more like you know tangible, something like uh, easier to do. And therefore, like uh, deliverable. So, in that sense, I I am really happy that this conversation is taking place, and I'm I'm actually taking notes on on like kind of correcting my kind of expect like my understanding of the community's expectations. And this this is a very good exercise. All right, Dane, you want to weigh in? I think we've gotten to some good insights over here. Cool. 
All right. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll walk through a flow if people don't mind, because I, I think that Mustafa has surfaced a really important issue, but we haven't hit it directly. The flow is like this. Suppose that we take today's Cosmos Hub on SDK 34, sorry, uh, Tenement 34 and SDK 45, and then we upgrade it to 37 and 47. Interestingly, and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think peer-to-peer -peer is compatible between those networks. And it, by the way, if it's not peer-to-peer, -peer, it'll be other things that are breaking. And I guess, well, peer-to-peer -peer is probably the most important thing because currently the in-place upgrade model, it assumes peer-to-peer -peer doesn't break. And yeah, Evan, and now, Evan, here's where it gets really interesting, though. It's already embarrassingly difficult to, like, uh, I, I don't mean to waste your time, by the way. Uh, so, like, imagine that peer to peer can really build a feature to redo handshakes. Uh, Marco, could you expand on that before I go down this doom path? I, I mean, it's just like, um... Like the let's say the format of dialing a peer does not change, then all you need to um, all you need to do is say like okay, these are the peers. I this is the upgrade height. Now I'm using the new P2P system. Redial these peers and reestablish a connection with them. But this this isn't something Tendermint uh, Comet currently supports. Oh, okay, and, so Comet would need to like basically know. It would need to be aware. Of the upgrade height and then it could serve blocks suppose we're using the cosmos hub as an example right it serves blocks from the genesis of cosmos hub 4 to whenever we upgrade to tenement 37 yeah. using the 34 peer-to-peer -peer protocol and then it changes because e even then i should say my concern is that it's it, it's already a really challenging task uh, to start from Genesis. Um, in fact, I, I should share with everybody here, the number of times I failed at it is a little insane. Um, and- Sorry, Jacob, what you just said is a very good mm -hmm. data point. What you just said is a very good data point, by the way. I, I, I'm taking good notes of that. Like the fact that it's challenging to go from scratch from from genesis yeah it's it, it's very hard i think that there are guys how many times did we do in place upgrades on guy i think it's there's four two we start at four two zero then there's a version that works for all of five there's six and then i i believe that if we sync through seven and when we begin to sync we have the Dragonberry patch is applied, it should go all the way through. Is that, does, is, does that match everyone's understanding? Roughly. Okay, cool. Um, I, I should tell everybody that like one of the things Osmosis has asked us to do, and, and I should say that this, this task has literally taken a year. Uh, I'm almost done with it, thank God. Um, is like, okay, there's a Cosmos Hub issue. It's called speed races. Uh, the idea was how rapidly using what technique can we go from Genesis to the tip? And I mean, basically I've been working on that in parallel on the hub and osmosis. And Maybe like the warning here is that the, the failure rate is crazy high. And each each version iteration, even for Osmo, where like the version changes happened more rapidly, it, it still takes more time than a human individual really has, right? Right. Jacob, is it okay if we, I, I think we see what you mean and it sounds like it actually, goes back to what Mustafa was mentioning earlier, because it's difficult in Comet, which is a, just a framework. It is not really made yet to take upgrade heights into account. 
sounds like you're talking about similar things, but Comet would need to be aware of upgrade heights and, and have in built-in support for that. But is it okay if we wrap it up here or is it should we kind of- Absolutely, because I, I, I think that is the only other thing that I wanted to mention on this particular point. I, 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 may I just take 30 seconds to one, one last thought that I think might be helpful. So uh, I've been reflecting on, on what you guys have been discussing and maybe they, we already have an example of that, very reduced example, very ad hoc. And so here's, here's the thing, um, we have a mechanism which is not exactly what you got, were discussing here, but it's a mechanism doing similar things, which is for vote extensions. So whenever we manage to get this alpha out or even the release out, and you go through it and you go through the, you know, through the specification and see how it works, see how we actually we uh, have designed the mechanism for go from no vote extensions to vote extensions, because that is actually, it was a critical thing that we needed to solve. And when, while I was actually listening to the conversation, I realized that it was actually it's done through a, through a consensus parameter. And my question is like, maybe a solution for this would be to generalize that into anything that you like, anything like, for instance, like having a, a like a consensus parameter. Because of course, the heights, the ifs that you guys, guys were talking about will depend on the chain. So it had that cannot be embedded in the code. It has to be some sort of like a consensus height or something like that. So uh, just something like something to consider when we get out. Uh, the next release. So after 37, please pay attention to how our extensions are activated and think of the discussion we had today. And, and I would be super grateful if you could actually could come back to me and say, no, you really, you know, it's nothing that has nothing to do, or yes, maybe we can extend that, you know, like, a, like as a, as a like rudimental solution that can be extended cool. to, a, to a full fledged one. Thanks. All right. Uh, we don't have 15 minutes left though. So that's why I was rushing that. Um, I don't know if Amit from Telegram is here, but if he is, uh, then we'll go into this. Otherwise, I suggest we co cover can, this. If can Can I just say one one more thing about the upgrade set? Because there's there's like two different ways to think about this. Mainly that I see either you make it possible to provide a height um, from the app or something or something aware of the logic of the chain that's going to upgrade. So either you take that and make it like param like a, a parameter. So in, ten, in in Comet, you know, oh, from this height, we switch to that version of, or take that code path, which I'm not sure that like works or not. Um, the other way would be to make Tendem and more like library, like where you can like plug in your nodes together as you need it, right? And then you could um, version all the different protocols and subcomponents um, and sub protocols um, differently. And then you could switch, like the developers developing the chain could instead of taking a comet off the shelf, they could like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm plugging in together my node, it's very simple. Uh, but also from that height, uh, I will use that, I don't know, that peer to peer protocol or something. That, like, if that was possible, um, so making it more modular essentially or more pluggable um, is 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 a bigger like probably a huger effort, but it's probably independently of what we're discussing, uh, very useful anyways. I I, I thinking. I I actually like the, what what you said, I smile here actually because the, the thing is like we we are already working on that on on making it modular and specifying each of the components where actually we can swap them out etc. So, so actually the way you are proposing to solve it would be, to me, would be super cool. The only thing is that if, if the community needs it like pretty fast, like solving it that way means that we have to put it behind all the specification and modularization effort we're doing now. I, 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 you know, like this is this trade-off, trade-off of when you want it and you know, how, 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 how well done you want it. <laughs> I don't know if that, that makes sense to you, Ismail. Yeah, I was like that. Understand yeah, how what the impact of this would be on uh, comic users who don't write their uh, state machines in Go, who rely on composing a node. Um, <laughs> and we have to have a generalizable solution for for all classes of users. Yeah, so, so we're we're actually doing the same thing, you know, like um, for like governance staking and like all these other modules. It's basically like you say, like new default comment, and that is like this is the scope of what you provide a guarantee for. And if they say new comet, and then they have to pass in mempool consensus and everything like that, um, then it's like, um, then, then it's, then it's, it's like out of whatever they plug in is out of the purview of yourself because it's imported from somewhere else. 
The, the other part that this like actually brings a big benefit is in when elderflower and dragonberry was happening, there's a ton of forks of tendermint and of the cosmos SDK in the ecosystem. And it was, we spent so much time diving through the repos to understand if the scope of their fork is adjusting this code path or not. And at a certain point, like it, it was just kind of like, we have to make them repo modular so people can fork sub protocols instead of having to fork the repo. Um, so it helps with like being able to like respond in, in incidences and understand like, is, does their fork touch this code path or does this fork only touch this code path? Um, so that's why it's like kind of like we're kind of moving faster towards that path because, uh, yeah, we just don't want to deal with like what we had to deal with in October. Thanks, Marco. All right. Thanks, everyone. It sounds like there's yet two approaches, one short term, one long term, and we will probably going to need to proceed with both of them in some way. Uh, cool. If we go to the same block execution discussion. No. All right. Do we have the time, Adi? Yes. Uh, well, we can, we can, well, we can time box it for 10 minutes. And if we don't get to the end of it, we can actually make it a, the first thing for next one. Yeah. I can answer the Telegram user also asynchronously. Uh, it, I don't think they're here, so that, I think that's fine. Uh, so regarding this, we did discuss optimistic processing feature. And I made a note then uh, that was last week that this is actually same block execution. But then it seems like I was wrong. Uh, or whoever was saying that this is that it's not. So maybe we can talk about same block execution and uh, the difference to optimistic processing, what, what say network implemented. And uh, Yernes, you want to kick it off? What is your use case? Hey, hey. Yeah, sure. I can do that. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, Right, so basically the use case is just uh, reducing the delay, right? Um, because currently we need to, um, the use case is actually we have um, light clients uh, inside uh, enclaves um, to verify the consensus layer. Um, and currently, basically, we need to wait uh, one extra block for uh, state root finality. It would be really nice if we could like get rid of that delay. So that's the main use case. Um, Thank you. And I guess actually, actually yeah. that. That, that tends to match the what we understand by immediate execution. Let me maybe take a couple of minutes uh, uh, clarifying the terminology at least that we used in the spec, in the ABCI spec. So there are two terms in the ABCI spec. One is immediate execution, and the other one is same same block execution. Now, they are not the same, okay? So let me explain, explain first immediate execution. Immediate execution means the ability for the application to be able to execute the block early on, so before deciding. This is, of course, not possible before ABCI 1.0, but when ABCI 1.0 prepare and process proposal, you can, you know, the application can, you know, the, you know, the, the beauty of prepare process proposal is that the it's up to the application to, 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 to decide how advanced usage of that they want to do, okay? Now, the most advanced usage of this is what we call immediate execution, which means that whenever you are done, you are the proposer, you are done preparing the proposal, or when you receive the proposal in process proposal, you basically execute it at that point and you keep it as a candidate state in your, you know, in your memory, wherever, like something like, okay, I've executed this. And then basically what you do is you say, okay, the block is valid. You say, okay, this block is valid, please go on. And then when the, when the block is finally decided with high probability it's gonna happen, then you don't execute it again, what you do, is you just take the state that you basically obtained at your process proposal time. Any questions so far? Uh, a quick, quick question from my side. I think like you might be saying it in the next sentence, but like for, for it to be immediate execution, you need to come to consensus on that app hash in the same block. No, Marco, this is actually the distinction I'm trying to, to make. This is actually same block execution. So they are not the same. So same. So, so let, let me let me continue the explanation. Maybe uh, I'll try. I'll try to do my best. So immediate execution is just saying that you are using ABCI one zero or ABCI two zero, and you choose you application choose to execute immediately because you can choose not to do it. You can still be using ABCI one zero and and choosing to ex as an application to ex execute at decision time. Why not? It's simpler. So why not doing that? If you don't need that for anything, you might do that. The the advantage that you get by executing it immediately, okay, today 
like as of 037, is that then you have the for the first time in in you know in 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 the history of cosmos. I don't know, I don't want to be too too like arrogant, but for the first time actually you are able to make sure that no invalid transaction will ever make it to a block, which is something you're gonna do today. Okay, so this is the great advantage that gives you immediate execution without same block execution. But with immediate execution, this, the format of the block is still the same, meaning that the blocks are referring to the previous beside the hash, et cetera, the, for instance, the, the consensus parameters, every, all, all these things that are always, was, were, were always referring to the previous block or two previous blocks in the case of, of uh, validator set, uh, is still like that. So immediate execution is something we are enabling in, in 037, but this does not uh, address Jarnet's uh, use case, because what Jarnes wants is same block execution. Now, in order to, to, to start thinking about same block execution, you have to assume immediate execution. In other words, if you want same, same, same block execution, you need immediate execution, but not the other way around. You might well have immediate execution, but still the blocks referring to the previous one, and, and, and basically life is good if it's good, good enough for you. And so, no, same block execution was something that in, in, initially we wanted to, uh, to implement into ABCI what we were calling ABCI++. So in, in principle, that was on the plate, that was on the table, and we wanted to do it, but we realized that, was, that would be very complex, in particular because it would be, back to the other discussion, it would be breaking the block structure. So in terms of a grading, et cetera, that was like a, you know, a kind of worms. And so basically what we decided is that in terms of execution, in terms of like uh, giving, giving the, the community some minimal viable product, we left same block execution out of the table. But it has always been actually on the table and I would say more, it's even specified already. So we actually specified it, but did not implement it. So uh, just to summarize, 037 and 038, or, or 10 if it an, ends up being called 10, allow for immediate execution. They do not, they do not support same block execution. However, same block execution is specified in, a, in one of our branches. Um, and you know, if, the, if the community has a strong interest in this, we can prioritize and, and basically start executing on, on implementation. So hopefully it was not too yeah. chaotic. So, so I see, I, um, I think everyone else is using immediate execution as same block execution and what you're describing as immediate execution as optimistic execution. So I think it's just like more, more terms to articulate around. Um, I think that's where the confusion is coming from. Okay, but 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 like, was it was it? I mean, did, did, it was it, was my explanation helpful? Yeah, it was... now 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 it makes sense. But like, um, I, I think Jer Jer um Sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. I think you and I were both confused in Slack because like we were like we consider immediate execution, like same block execution and optimistic execution as what Sergio described as. Uh, immediate execution so that's why yeah. the computer sure, sure. yeah i was yeah. Uh, reading one of the earlier specs and there, there it is referred as like the same block execution so that i think was clear it's just that like what the uh, say network uh, has is actually this immediate execution oh so you read that version of the spec uh, yes is that addressing your use case the uh, same block execution yes yeah what was specified it's not implemented so of course you could no, sure yeah yeah that that exactly addresses the the, the use case yes good, good. so basically then the, it comes down to basically saying how important this is uh, in order to prioritize it in which quarter we fit it <laughs> right then i mean i don't know if you have other thoughts Sergio, there. can you navigate me to the spec please um, i have yeah, the, repo open. yes it's the version of the spec uh on living on master I know we're not using it, we have abandoned it, but it's living there. Okay. Because initially we wanted- Yeah, it to was removed, right? In it. some yes. version, right? We, we wanted to implement it, and then we realized that it would be way too much for the first version of ABCI++, as it was called at the time. Mm -hmm. So we decided to remove that part. And so basically we removed it from the spec because we always want our specs to match the implementation, not to in introduce confusion. Yeah, I think we'd have a conversation around the, the upgrade path that we hear. And like once we can figure out the potential upgrade paths, then we can also start thinking about like, you know, how do we schedule this in? What are the impacts, et cetera? So I think we're gonna have to do some thinking about this. You're right, then uh, I just I just realized like that specification was not dealing with upgrading. So the specification in some sense it's incomplete, I have to say. In the sense that, like, what do you do if you have a chain and basically you wanna in the next version you wanna switch to same block execution? 
how do you do it? Like, how do you deal with all the blocks that you have been producing? How do yeah. you transition this? This is not clear how it's going to happen. So the, the, specific, like... the specification on master is basically assuming you're starting a chain from Genesis. Exactly. Yeah. So I think we need to, we need to think a little bit harder about the, the upgrade conversation that we were having earlier and then make some decisions on that front first. It seems like that's that's on the critical path to being able to at least understanding what our approach is going to be dealing with upgrades. And then, then we can also uh, flesh this out in more detail. I agree with that because uh, dealing with the upgrade thing first, like, like the other one, the same block execution has this upgrade component. So probably when we tackle that one, it would be cool that we have already had all the conversations we need to have for the in, in general for the upgrades that we discussed in the first half of this meeting. Yeah, Nurse, does it make sense that this require that this basically assumes uh, us working first on, on upgrades, addressing that bigger first? Uh, sure. I mean, if um, yeah, if you want to actually have a transition path, then yeah, you need a way to upgrade yeah. to this. Because Jarnas, yeah. your, your use case in, in your use case, do you need the upgrade part or or you would be okay to, to hard fork? We would be okay to hard fork. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, then okay, then I don't know. Then I don't know what to say. Yeah, I mean, then there's a couple of, we have to think about like um, what ultimately what promises do we make with the software? It's like, do we do we implement same block execution as an op opt-in bit of functionality? But then the restriction there is that we you, you have to either hard fork or you start from Genesis um, or do we offer upgrade ability? Um, and, and so if we offer upgrade ability, then obviously we have to sort out the upgrade part first, but if we could offer both somehow, then then we also still need to think about how do we schedule this work in. Uh, at least from the SDK's point of view, um, we would require both just because the SDK is built with delayed execution in mind, um, and we would have to like basically rewrite most of the SDK to to do this, um, yeah. or at least like staking and everything like that, um, which is something we do want to do, but like there are trade-offs that applications may not be willing to accept to get um, same block execution. We, we totally understand that. Yes, totally understand. Yeah. It's a very important data point. Thanks, Marco. Uh, so then it would be ideal if, if Comet can actually do it in a way that is parameterizable, whether you want to do delayed block execution or whether you want to do same block execution so that the SDK can continue on this path. Um, okay, we're sadly out of time. Um, I think it's okay. I will I will handle this other thing on with the Telegram user directly. Uh, unless you're here and you're willing to stay one more minute. Amit. Okay, I guess they're not. Maybe we maybe ask for feedback from, from you guys, like what you like, what you didn't like, any any thoughts on how this because this meeting was really I I really I'm really happy to see so many people around this real community goal, really. Yeah, it was a uh, super psyched to see everybody over here and also a super valuable conversation from my perspective. How's everybody else feel? Yeah, happy happy to discuss further and give feedback on um, yeah. any kind of like upgrade mechanism proposed. We'll, we'll be coming back to you, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll be coming back. Yeah, so actually I forgot, like in, in my mind, this the way we would develop these things would be uh, very similar to how we, we you know, you guys start, because when I joined, you had already put that in place, like these ad hoc meetings, bi-weekly meetings, where people that are interested in that feature can actually help us uh, improve, you know, iteratively improve the design. This is basically how we came up with ABC++. And I think it was a, a good way of doing it. And, and in my opinion, uh, that that's basically the, the way I would propose that we, we, we move from here. Yeah, sounds good. All right, there's nothing else.